I was reading something in Isaiah chapter 26, and I want to share it with you guys. It's just two scriptures. It's Isaiah chapter 26, 20, and 21. I know there are people that sometimes when they're reading the Bible, they're like, you know, just don't think deeper than what it says and everything. And some things, it's very clear, right? You know, Jesus was crucified on the cross. He was literally crucified. That happened. We don't need to think any deeper than that. Um, however, we'll see where the Holy Spirit will say, you know what? He nailed. Let's let me show you something in Colossians 2 really quickly. Okay, so I hope that I can really convey this. You know, everything in the Bible, some things are straightforward. Jesus died on the cross. Yes, he was crucified. He was nailed to the cross. Yet there was something deeper, very spiritual in that, right? But he was literally nailed to the cross. He literally died on the cross. He was literally taken down. He was literally wrapped in linen, buried inside a tomb, and he literally rose. But what I'm saying is, you have to understand that the words in the Bible are quick and it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. So while certain things are literal, like, okay, Jesus really died, there's deeper spiritual significance in what he did. So I'm going to show you this. All right? All right. So let's go to 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. I think I should go up to make more sense. All right, so let's do this. Let's go to nine. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, talk about Jesus, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. In whom also you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, but putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism. So, you know what? Buried with him in baptism. That's even one. They're significant. Okay, you get baptized, but, but there's a deep spiritual meaning behind that, right? And what is it? What's the deep spiritual meaning behind baptism? Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. So even in his resurrection, he physically rose. Yes, you can read he rose, but there was a deep spiritual meaning behind that. So the baptism, the act itself is baptism, but there's something deep and spiritual behind it. So let's say why? Why is baptism significant? What is the deep spiritual meaning behind it? Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen when we rise up out the water with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your sins, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. He was physically on the cross, but there was a deeper spiritual purpose for the cross, as I just read to you here. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So I'm going to stop there. So even though the word of God, yes, you read it and that's what it said, that God died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross. I'm correcting myself. Jesus died on the cross. The son of God was crucified, died on the cross. We read that, but yet there's also a deeper meaning behind it. So guys, sometimes you're going to have to use discernment. You're going to have to ask the Lord to open up your understanding so you can understand scripture because there are people like when you're sharing scriptures and you're reading things to them, they will be like, ah, oh, you're going too far. You're being too spiritual. So if we're not being spiritual, how could you be too spiritual? You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to be led by the spirit. The word of God says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What is the lust of the flesh? Not necessarily just lust and lustful sexual lust, but also you'll be tempted to want to minimize spiritual things. You want to localize and minimize, normalize what is actually spiritual. And so we have to be very careful with that. So that's all comes from the balance. And I will ask you to read Luke 24 and 45, where you see that Jesus touched his disciples. He opened up their understanding so they can comprehend scripture. 
So I'm going to get back to the word at hand, Isaiah chapter 26, 20 through 21. It says, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. I'll read that again, Isaiah chapter 27, I'm sorry, 26, 20 and 21. It says, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. There's an exposing that's coming. The Lord revealed to me in the scripture, there's an exposing that's coming. No more are things going to be hidden. The blood that's been shed, the infractions, the things that has been done, the, the, the violations, things that's been hidden, regardless of the person's status, whether they are poor, whether they're super rich, whether they're part of the 1%, God is beginning to open things up. And he is going to bring punishment and he's going to bring judgment. We're seeing it in small increments. You see the, the, the news and the media, they measure out and they kind of doctor the news. Okay. You get things, but everything is always controlled. You know, that's one thing that I've learned when I was taking classes is that the media and the news Everything is controlled. You're going to get things in certain measures depending on what they want you to believe. And so this is why, while you may look at it and see what's there, you it's important that you have a relationship with God so he can tell you and put you, and put you at ease or put you on high alert. Whichever one, it comes from him. And so what I'm saying is you may be seeing some things about you know, people being exposed, this happening, that's happening. And you're seeing it in the news at different times and different seasons. But in reality, this is happening every day. It's just that it's not covered. These people may not be famous. These people are not considered to be significant. It simply didn't make the news. The news cannot cover every single thing that's going on on the planet as it happens. But exposure... And God's judgment is falling on people at high levels, guys. And so sometimes as believers, you may be thinking like, Lord, my life is super boring right now. <sighs> I feel so bored. What is happening, Lord? Why is it taking so long? Why is everything so quiet? Why is no one around me? Why is, why is this? Because God has you in a place of safety while his indignation and his wrath is going over the face of the earth. Just because you don't hear about it, just because we didn't read about it, just because we didn't see it, doesn't mean that it's not happening. There are pastors, leaders, there are people who are sinning against God, who are falling dead, who are entering into the pits of hell right now, who are are experiencing things in their body, in their mind. They are losing their minds. They're losing their sanity. They're sleepless. The God is bringing it. Just because you don't read about it and just because it don't make the news doesn't mean it's not happening. There are people who say, oh, God's not punishing anybody. He's not doing anything. Seems like evil people is getting away with stuff. But there's a lot of evil people that's being punished at this moment that are getting their just due at this moment. It may not have hit your door and you don't see it. But believe me, it's happening. It seems like evil people get away. No, there's a lot of evil people that's being punished, that things happening to them. It may be in their body. It may be in their mind. They're people, sometimes guys, the Lord show me, sometimes homeless people that you see walking on the streets, guys, some of those people were doing great things in their lives, but they were wicked and they were evil. And they're simply going through like a Nebuchadnezzar experience. They're living outdoors, they've lost their minds, and this is only for some, some. There are other people, things has happened to them, they lost their homes, people did not help them, 
you know, the banks were not giving them an opportunity, the lenders were not, and things happen. So I'm not telling anyone to go out there and start looking at the homeless and say, oh, you must have done something to be here. No, that's not our job to be trying to pinpoint and figure out who did wrong and who did evil. You help and you do right by them. And even if they were the ones that did wrong and got themselves there, they will still see God looking out for them even in that position. And then at the same time, you'll be helping those who who really needs it. They didn't do anything but you're still helping them. It's not our job to try to police up and figure out someone's background or make assumptions. And at the same time, there are people who are homeless that's walking around that are actual angels unaware. The Lord revealed that to me. All right. So guys, let's talk about this. Sometimes, you know, there are many of God's children that's wondering what's happening. How come I'm, you know, there's a lot of people that's being pulled out of churches right now. And you are worried. Where should I go? Where should I go? Guys, the word of God. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Go home and learn at the feet of Jesus how to teach your family, how to teach the word. He will teach you and he will show you. Ask the Lord to teach you and show you how to pray with your family, how to have Bible studies with your family. And you can make it fun. Okay? Allow your children to teach sometimes when they want to. They may not want to at first, but don't force them. Don't force them. Come up here and say something about God. Don't do that. Leave them be. As you're teaching and you're talking to them, little by little, the Lord will change them. You see, they'll start to participate. And if they just sit there looking like, well, they're still hearing. Those seeds are still being planted. But God is pulling people, those who are... God has wake, uh, have woke them up. And I'm not talking about the woke movement. I'm talking about awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead. That is in the word of God. Getting out of sin and unrighteousness. God begins to open up your eyes and you suddenly realize, what am I doing? You suddenly begin to hear. You suddenly begin to hear. But it's not new. It was always being said. These messages, these behaviors were always there. They were always that way. But God begins to open your eyes. And so he's pulling people out. He's pulling a lot of people out of churches that it's nothing more than a, a modern day golden calf. He's pulling them out. Not all of them are like that because I do believe that there are some places, some churches that are there and there are people that at this point and they what they may need that guidance. But I always say to pastors, even those who are found the Lord, to be careful that when people enter your church, it's not about them coming in and staying forever. It is that you got to be able to plant the seeds in them, give them the seeds that they need, and also realize that you do not have the blueprint and the fine prints for their lives. So they may be there for a season and time, but you as a pastor and leader should be in the business of planting those seeds, <clears throat> excuse me, being mindful of what the Lord is saying to you and being respectful of what the Lord says to this individual and realize that at some point they need to be launching out into the deep and not necessarily launching out because there's a lot of pastors that do that. They may be sending them out to this campus and that campus, but what's happening, he's at the top of the pyramid. It's like a pyramid scheme. So I'm at the top and then that, 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 that. And then this pastor that's at the top, these leaders, they are dictating to these pastors what they're going to do and what they're going to say and what they're going to teach. And they are not being led by the Holy Spirit. So launching out is not necessarily, okay, I launch you out, but you still have a leash on them. Yank them in. Hey, that's not the message I want you to preach. Hey, come here. You understand? <laughs> and so you want to have where God launches them out, where he wants them to go. Where is God saying for you to go? And you let them go. So that's important about the churches, guys. Let me, let me bring this message back in. There are some churches, not all churches are bad. Not all pastors are evil. Like a good high percentage of, a percentage of them have lost the way. They've become caught up in in money and glory and being worshiped and they become that many have become entitled but there are a few people that god has actually planted them in places where 
they can get the few that really wants to serve the Lord and and um and pour into them through the power of the Holy Spirit. But it is important that at all times, even in these churches, that you're not saying I'm here to stay for 50 years and 10 years, okay? But you're there to say, okay, Lord, I am here. I'm laboring in this ministry at this time at, for a certain period of time. But Lord, what is your will? And be willing to move when God says that. And pastors should be willing to let go of people that come in. So they can now, after they've come in, they've got their seed, they've grown. Now the Lord is like, okay, time for you to continue on the trip. Churches should really be like a rest stop or a little hotel or something you stay at for a while. You go there to get refreshed, to get what you need. You may stay there longer, right? But at the end of it all, it's for you to now move on and continue on your journey in Christ. That's my take on it. But these other churches, that's like a nightclub with a cross on it. These places where everyone's worshiping the pastor, God is pulling lots of people out. He's giving people mercy to get out. He's also, these are the times where your friendships and relationships and things that you want to hold on to, those are ending too. And you're like, what is going on? It's just me and, you know, the furniture up in here, you know, God is pulling you from people. He's exposing people. Why? He's pulling you away. He's telling you to close the door. He's telling you to close that relationship, that relationship that's getting increasingly worse because it's not supposed to be god will give you a way out and the reason why he's doing that is because he's trying to get you into this place of safety because his judgment is about to be poured out and if you read in the word of god a lot of times when god is getting ready to destroy a place Let's go to Egypt. The children of Israel were still there. But you know what? The Lord told them, get in the house. And there's instructions. You need to put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of your house. So that when the spirit of death and all the plagues and everything is coming, they will see the blood and pass over you. We have the blood of Jesus on us. We have the seal of God on us. The powers of darkness recognize us. And that's why you get mistreated. That's why we get mistreated. We get ostracized. People don't like you. You're not in the circle anymore because you're not like them anymore. Your friends and these people used to hang around. You're not vibing. You're not clicking with them anymore. And sometimes they can't even figure out why they're being funny with you. But you just irritate them for some reason. That's because the evil spirits in which you used to collaborate with and be chilling with, and you were a part of it, they recognize the spirit of God on you. So it's not going to work anymore. And a lot of times those evil spirits, because they see the Holy Spirit on you and all that, they want this relationship to break up. They're trying to get this man to leave you. So they start to act up in him so that they can go and be in a place where they can be comfortable. But you keep holding on. No, no. I'm going to pray Rodney back to God. I'm going to pray Rodney back. Lord, Lord, say Rodney. No, Rodney has to recognize in his heart who God is. And it's not going to happen as long as Rodney keeps fooling with you. So that's why you're being separated, guys. That's why you feel like you're isolated. You're not isolated. We got to know that we're not isolated. We are being protected because there is a cleaning coming out. A, a clean sweep. God is, he is doing a complete, I'm not going to say annihilation, but his judgment is coming. And people are dying. People that's been doing evil for a long time, they are dying. The powers of darkness are out there raging and doing evil. People are becoming more and more evil and God has to do something. But in the meantime, he's telling you, stay where you are. Shut your door. Hide yourself for a little moment until the indignation has passed. And guys, this does not necessarily mean shut your door and don't go to work anymore. Some of you have to go to work. But God will protect you. 
I'm not saying you can't go and enjoy your family. What I'm saying is there's a time that you're literally, you can be out and about doing things, but you can tell a difference where things are not the same. Your phone is not ringing like it used to. You're not getting invited out like you used to. That's because God has shut that door because something is happening. There is a difference between you and them. You no longer have certain things in common anymore. They still don't want to yield to God. They still don't think it take all that. They still think you being too holy, too righteous. They want to live in the world and still do some of God. And so what's happening, God is pulling you away because his wrath is coming. And the slain will no more be covered. That means the dirt and the stuff that they have done. If you read in verse 21, it says, and the earth shall also disclose her blood. What does it mean? He's going, he's going to bring it out and, the, and, and shall no more cover her slain. So people that has been done wrong, they're getting ready to be vindicated. People that has been lied on, the truth is getting ready to come out. People who have their ideas have been stolen and someone else is sitting there prospering off of an idea that they shared with someone that they thought they could trust and they stole their idea and is now prospering. God is getting ready to bring justice in that. And even some people, it's in my spirit, there's people who's been uh, on, there have been uh, locked up wrongfully they're going to be set free out of prison somebody needs to hear this there's somebody who's listening to me your your child it, it's someone you're related to they have been locked up a wrongful wrongful arrest wrongful incarcerations they're getting ready there's going to be a change there's going to be a judge there's going to be somebody that's going to look at this case again and that person is getting ready to be set free these are some of the areas in which the, 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 the truth is going to be exposed. But I'm trying to tell you where this wrath and this judgment is going to start first. is going to be in the house of God. Where the slain is going to be uncovered is going to be in the house of God. Because there's a lot of souls that's been slain up in the house of God. There's a lot of blood that's been spilt on God's children by, you know, by in the church. It may not be physical, even though some places might be doing some crazy stuff. But families have been destroyed. Tears has been shed when... A husband has to leave a church and his wife and kids want to stay because this is the type of stuff that's going on. And I'm not talking about a man that's just being unholy, but we're talking about, you know, just the church has become a cult. It's become a cult. I'm going to, I'm going to pin a message under here called church or cult. Something the Lord gave me a couple years back. A woman can find herself at home and her husband and her kids are there. A family could find their kids have more allegiance to the pastor than to themselves. These are the tears. This is the pain. These are the slain. These are the, the, the things that's going to come up. Because those children that disrespected their parents and hurt their parents for the pastor, they're getting ready to see what they really are, what their pastor and their leaders really are. That man, you left your, your wife uh, or you, you broke up your relationship with somebody so that you can marry the person that was in the circle and in the clique in the church. You're getting ready to see who you really are with. You're going to see that you married a wolf. You broke her heart for this woman who was in the circle of people that were ungodly. You broke the heart of your someone you were dating to be with this person because you were given a false prophecy that you're supposed to leave this man that God gave, brought to be in your life. Now you're with this man. Who has, you, you begin to see he is not who he says he is. God is bringing exposure and it's going to start in the house of God. And as individuals, when God shows us the things in our personal lives, when you look at the person in the mirror and God begins to show you some things, say, hey, you need to deal with this. Listen to him because his indignation will reach you. The reason why you're in this place that feels as if you're lonely, you're not doing the things that you normally do anymore is because 
the indignation of the Lord is going throughout this earth. His judgment, his wrath is pouring down. He's pulling you from certain people and relationships because they are sinning against him. The wages of sin brings death. They are encompassed by evil and dark spirits. They are capable of anything truly, believe it or not. And the wrath of God is coming against those who continue to sin against him without remorse, without hesitation. And so he is moving you. He gives, keeps you safe, keeps your family safe as you go out and you do the things that you need to do. But he's saying, come to me. You're not in that big circle anymore. Things have changed because my wrath and indignation is falling on them. My seal is upon you. You're in this place. It's in my heart just to speak to someone and to speak to those of you that's listening, not to despise where you are, not to despise the peaceful place that you're in, not to despise the, the, the quietness that you have around you and use this time not to be bored and to just be waning and wondering and hoping, but get to know God, get closer to him in the word. Exposure is coming. The iniquity of people that's been sinning for a long time is going to be punished. They're going to be punished for what they've done. They're going to be punished for the laws that they have passed to try to silence the children of God. They're going to be punished for the physical attacks that they have, they have uh, meted out on God's children. They're going to be punished for the evil that they've done to the fatherless and the widows and the poor and those who were vulnerable and the elderly and those who trusted them. Children are getting ready to be punished for their disobedience to their parents. Children that keep sneaking out. You are not going to come back home one night if you keep sneaking out. Because you're not going to keep tormenting your parents. Children are going to meet the spirit of death. You go out there, you're a child, but you have a grown man's gun in your, in your hip and want to go rob something. Somebody, you're in a group, you're thinking of doing a robbery. You're being told that we're going to do this, this last little heist right here. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to die that day. You're not going to keep doing these things, entering into people's homes and robbing and stealing and tormenting and bothering people. Disobedient children are also going to be punished. Evil parents, you're going to be punished too. You cannot continue to torment and hurt your children and your family, tormenting your grown kids, playing games and thinking nothing is going to happen to you. You have been irresponsible with your position as a parent. You have been evil with the power and the authority you are given as a parent. God sees that. You will be punished for the things that you have done to your children, even now that they are grown. Because there's an entitled spirit that many parents have. It is a wicked, demonic spirit. You have disrespected, hurt your children. You have caused problems. You've broken their hearts. You've broken, you've hurt them in relationships, their friendships. You are trying to be the BFF to their friends. You've done things. You've infiltrated them and even their marriages. And you are still expecting them to love and respect you. But this is very difficult when they're wounded and God is trying to heal them and God is going to heal them. But you are going to be punished and held accountable for the way you treated your children. The racist are going to be punished. The sexist are going to be punished. The passive aggressive folks, you're going to be punished for that sin. The one who lies and starts stuff and sits there and acts innocent, you're going to be punished for that. If you do not repent, if you do not turn around, by the time you want to say, God, forgive me, it will be too late for you. Stop doing what you're doing. God pays attention even to those sins that you think is not a big deal. It's in my spirit to speak to someone. You have this habit of when someone is talking to you, you don't answer them because you don't want to. 
and you know it bothers them, but you do it on purpose. It's actually like you almost laugh within yourself. They'll talk to you and you act like you don't hear it. God sees you and he's going to punish you for that. You may think it's no big deal, but no, that is a tormenting spirit that operates through you where these individuals recognize what bothers someone and that person would have verbalized it and asked them not to do it and they will continue to do it on purpose and deny it. That is an evil, demonic, tormenting, deceptive spirit. You will be punished for that. This is a time, guys, that we need to turn to God with a whole heart and ask him to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. And he will do that. But this time that the Lord is telling us to enter into our chambers, to shut the doors about us, to hide ourselves. We're in a place that God is keeping us safe. And not only that, his return is soon. This is a time that you're in the chambers, just like a bride who prepares herself for her wedding. This is not the time that we're going to go out and get our garments and get our clothing all soiled and messed up again. No more those emotional and volatile conversations. No more taking those phone calls that set you all the way off, that keeps you sad and depressed. You have a headache, your migraines. God is moving and changing it. He's going to change it. And it's in my heart, some of you, you're in marriages. It is a nightmare. You've prayed, you've fasted, you've done everything. God is saying just to wait. Because in these cases, he's going to make the moves. He's going to, he's going to show you. He's going to open that door. He's going to make some major changes. So you may say, God, what am I supposed to do? The Lord says, wait on me. And when I instruct you, you follow me. I pray that this word brings some clarity. I pray that this word makes some sense. I pray that this word brings, you know, peace to your heart. To those of you that you feel like you're alone, you feel like there's no one around you. There's an unseen audience. There's more with you than what you could ever hope to be with you. God is simply protecting his children. He's removing you from the crosshairs of sin. He's removing you from the company of the ungodly. He's moving you from these demonic churches. He's taking you from places where his spirit has long left. And he's putting you in a place where you can hear him. You can seek him for yourself. You can grow with him. You can trust him. And you will be safely safeguarded by the power of the Holy Spirit. God's judgment is coming. God's wrath is moving upon the face of this earth. And people are dying in groves. I'm not saying that every person that's died and everything that's happened is because God's wrath was against them. That would have just been their time. There are those of us who are humans. When God says it's our time, we're going to go. We're just going to go. That's it. It has nothing to do with you being ungodly. It's time for you to go. But I'm talking about right now, there's a lot of sinful people. That's been sinning freely. And they're going to get the ramifications and the fallout for their sins. There's a lot of people that God has been giving them chances for many years. And he's going to do a clean sweep just like he did with the flood. And just clean them off the face of the earth. And they're all falling where? Into the pits of hell. Turn around. Turn around those of you that you're in sin. Turn around. Turn around. Do not take God's grace and mercy for granted. Do not take the silence to mean consent. Do not take God's grace to mean go. Yeah, go and sin some more. That's not what the word of God tells you. And those of you that's in that secret place, embrace it. God is protecting you. All right, guys.